Hello everyone. Um, this is week two of Line and Wash and so far I've not been able to drag myself away from the flowers um, and certainly do not feel inspired to paint from photos at the moment. Um, but please feel free to do so if you prefer to paint different subjects as I've suggested that maybe you would. Um, so this week I've found some fritillias to paint as you just saw. Um, these types of flowers lend themselves well to line and wash, partly because they're quite small and have markings that can be scribbled in with the pen and um, little bits of detail that you can put in with the pen and then not worry too much about when you're actually painting them. Um, there are other similar flowers that are, are good for line and wash, which um, I'll make a note of for you um, and attach. But I've decided on these little fritillias this time. And those are the colours that I'm going to use. I have some red ones and some white ones. Um, and I think I'll put a mixture of the two colours in my picture. I've done the drawing, um, holding my pen nice and loosely as before suggested and put in some of the little detailed markings but not overdone that because I don't want the pen to create too heavy an appearance um, on the flowers because they are such tiny delicate things and I really want to to use some of the paint to make some of the markings. This time I've used a, a grey pen, a, a darkish grey pen, which is a, a 05, and again a very light one. So it suits the subject well. Now, I think I'm going to start with that little one over there and have that a white one. It's actually opened up quite a lot since I did the drawing, but it's got some pretty little shadowy markings and a certain amount of green on it as well. But again, I'm just going to try and be quite loose with my colours. and leave quite a bit for for the, for the pen to show and also thinking about putting a little bit of background on today as well and allowing some of this to flow into the background which I'll get to in a minute. Right, I'm going to make this one the red one. Not colouring in like a colouring book, feeling that I've got to Fill in every single space. I'm keeping little light areas and allowing the pen to show through because that's why it's there. These can be very complicated flowers to actually paint without the line and wash so it's a good choice this week As last week, I can go back and pop 
pop in a little bit more colour or detail when it's a bit drier perhaps. But there's a light and a dark side to this flower, so I've tried to portray that, which all helps with making it interesting to look at. Stalks tend to be quite purpley too, so that's added interest. But I'm going to start popping in a little bit of background as I go along, I think. And I'm going to go over the leaves because I feel like I can paint the leaves well, mostly anyway, it's going to be easier to pop this background over the leaves and paint the leaves separately afterwards. They have lots of leaves, it's all part of the character of the flower, so I had to put them in. But I thought if I use some yellow against this purpley red, it's going to look quite nice and allow some of this purple to creep into the yellow, which is going to make a nice shadowy color. You don't have to go everywhere with the background, just around the flowers to create some interest here. Keeping that outside edge nice and wet. And when that's dry, I may go back in and put a little bit more brightness there. But I'll bring the background across. This is actually Cad Free Yellow Pale. If you drop the water down first, it always makes for a nice soft background. And don't worry if some of those colours creep into your flowers, it's going to still look good because you've created the shapes already with the pen. There's some cobalt blue in that little flower there. So if I pop a little bit of that down onto the yellow, it's going to look nice. And bring the color of the shadows in the flower out into the background a little bit. I'm using quite a small brush. That way I've got a little bit more control. So you may feel like doing the same. It's unlike me to use such a small brush, but this is a very delicate little flower. Right, carry on. Uh, I think that one maybe needs to be white, and that one, the red one. And another red, tiny one. Right. So not much work to do in the white ones, really. Just touches of shadow and creating nice marks. But they do have quite a bit of green at the top of them, look. Very 
intriguing flowers. And quite tough little flowers as well to be out there in this weather. A bit of a wobbly table today. Leave the rest, I think, now for the background to show up. They don't, the white ones don't have the little sort of um, square markings. They're not so precise at all as the uh, red ones. They don't have particularly precise markings in them anywhere. Right, so this one's hiding behind, partly hiding behind some leaf. So it always helps if you can get some perspective into your pictures like that by putting one thing behind something else rather than spaces between all of your flowers. background now. I make the dark background a little bit deeper through the focal area here, through the centre. So this is to show you that you can be very delicate with line and wash. It doesn't have to be heavy and strong and you can paint very nice delicate flowers with using this technique which as I've said before is incredibly helpful to use when painting certain flowers, flowers that have a lot of detail and intricate sections to them. For instance laburnum and lavender and hydrangeas even and you know the more complicated ones hyacinths bluebells 
which will be coming soon, I guess. They're all going to be quite good flowers to portray using these techniques. Easier in many, many ways, and the result can be less disappointing, I think, than if you try to paint them just using your watercolours. So it's, a lot of it is about the background this week, which is something to show you that we didn't do last week. So there's just one more little red one here that hasn't quite opened yet. Well, it hadn't when I was drawing it, it's a bit more open now. This would stop rattling. Maybe you won't hear it. It's going to have a lot more definition when I get the the depth in a bit more and also the, the leaves and stalks. So try to create a nice shape with your background so that it isn't just a, a blob around uh, your subjects. Maybe put some directional shapes in, seeing which way the whole thing is kind of following, the shape that it's following here. Just all of that kind of thing is going to give it some interest. Right, so <clears throat> don't, it's not very dry, but it's drier than it was and probably dry enough for me just to go back now put a little bit more strength into here and to show up those little markings a bit more. But don't overdo things like this. Just leave, just hint at it and leave it for the viewer to work out the rest especially with this technique. But that's just giving it a little bit more life, I think. Don't need to touch that one. I like it as it is because the risk is touching it too much and, and covering up your very faint pen lines and, and they're there for a reason, so. Try not to, to do that. They do have these markings carrying on all the way down, but you can just Put a few maybe at the bottom just to tell that story, but I think putting too many on 
is going to take away from the looseness of it. It's very difficult to not to put in every single thing that you see in situations like this. Just dropping water back on will make nice texture. But um, do try. These have a little bit of depth of colour just at the top there, which is helpful. All right, now all I've got is the stalks and leaves, so Let's see. Um, I'm going to go with the some of this lovely red over the top. I don't really want the green to show up too much. be stronger through that area there which is going to help with the focal point that's the so it's always an important area just off center I think this is the focal area here or I hope it will be eventually Letting the brush do the work by working on the side of it a bit more. Try not to hurry too much, but I'm running out of time. It's a lot to do here with these leaves. I hope I'm not working out the top of the page again. Put a bit of tape on the table so that I didn't move the thing up too much. And I'll let those stay a little greener, I think. Just for some variety. Putting maybe a little bit more yellow into my green. Loosely following my pen drawing but not worrying about going over the edge. In fact that's a good thing. It's always a good thing not to completely follow what you see in your subject, but at the same time, you do have to try and capture the character of the subject as well. So hopefully I've shown what this 
flower dust I think I'm just about there. Just with the very tip, I'm putting in just a little bit more brightness. into these, just with the tip of the brush. Purples do tend to be a little bit dulling and go a little bit dull if you're not careful when they're drying up. So keep an eye on that. And you can always put pinks and more colorful tones in with your purples just to liven them. And I really think you need to do that. But I don't want to touch this too much more. But I think that's just given it a little bit more depth, a little bit more life, a little bit more colour. not dry it's still crinkled a little bit so there's no reason why I shouldn't just give it a little bit of a splatter because I think that suits the subject but go easy don't go mad with things like that So I'll just stop and allow that to dry so I can see what it looks like for you when it is dry. There we are. That's almost dry now. Um, and as I said last week, this is the point where you can go back in and add and or take away with your little eradicator brush if necessary. Um, all I've done before I dried it was to take the background a little bit further and a little bit deeper around and near the white flowers to bring those out a little bit more. But that's it. Um, so I hope you'll find something nice to portray this week with this line and wash technique. Um, I'll show you a couple of others that I've done. Another delicate flower that was in my Mother's Day arrangement. Um, some lovely freesias. So that's actually a little bit more um, traditional in a way in that I haven't created any background. I've just drawn it and painted it leaving white paper. But I went again and decided to create a looser end result, which was painted in exactly the same way as I've just painted the fritillia, allowing the, the color to bleed into the background. Um, big tip, um, try a little sketch first to make sure you get your colors right and to give yourself an idea of what you want to do, which is what I did first. Um, but if you want to go away from flowers and create something completely different, then that's fine too. This is also using quite a fine pen. Um, and just a little farmyard scene. And it's really good for things like that, where it's got kind of fences and bits of wire and, you know, scruffy bits. 
where you can be really quite scribbly with your with your pen. So if you fancy doing something like that instead, then please, you know, choose your own subject and go ahead. Okay, so that's it for this week. Um, your extra visit video um, is of my painting that particular freesia so you can watch that as well if you feel that it will be helpful um, nice intricate flower again so next week I have no idea what I'll be working on um, whether I'll still be able to um, drag myself away from the garden I'm very inspired by what's going on out there when it isn't raining um, so it may be flowers again. Magnolias are looking a little bit tatty around the edges at the moment. I've never painted a magnolia with line and wash. I tend to only paint smaller flowers. Um, but I may give that a go and see, see how that works out. But um, same technique next week anyway. So have a good week and enjoy your line and wash. Take care. Bye bye.